Man, has it been a busy week. Um, I had a company come down. We went and did uh, uh, a whole day adventure with four people on the boat, four more people on the boat. Um, Scott, Sue, Keegan, and Faith. Uh, I want you guys to see that, a little bit of that, just so you can tell how it would be if you were living on a houseboat this size and you had your couple of kids and grandkids come to visit you, that kind of thing. Um, or if you're a young person watching my channel, I know 30% of my channel is for people under under 40 years old. So if you're going to have a bunch of your friends come out and hang out for the weekend, this is how that would go. Um, the other thing is, one of my friends owns a homestead near here, and I went to go check it out. Um, and I actually found some land that I really liked. I've, I've been kind of holding back to find a piece of property where I wanted a hilltop, I wanted to look down, um, I wanted taxes to be extremely low where I wouldn't even, you know, where I wouldn't even feel them. So, and I finally found a spot. So we'll go into that a little bit. And yeah, and this might be, and then the next episode will probably be me wrapping up the boat to keep it, you know, here at the dock for three months without me being here. Um, and that's where we'll get to that point. Oh shit, I'm gonna get wet. Try to turn around and come our way. He might go in a shallow water, whatever. It'll happen. He'll find out. Yeah. I want to see him once he gets it going. He's kind of afraid, you can tell. So this is Keegan's never motored any boat before. This is the first time using a motor by himself. And I gave him, what, a two minute lesson? Two and a half minutes? And then he gave me a little ride Four. and that was it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, he's building up confidence. He thinks it's going to tip. That's why he won't gun it. Lead forwards. Remember, remember to get forwards on your knees. Yeah, as forwards as you can with your weight. Keep going. There you go. That's on point. Now you can go. Now. Here comes Keegan and Faith playing around in the dinghy. is 1.2 miles per hour per knot, so it's 19 miles an hour. Okay. It'll go. This is not only one of my longest subscribers, but one of the most important people on the planet to me. This is Sue. I want you guys to all meet her. She takes care of me whenever anything goes wrong. Do you have a good ride, Sue? Such a good ride. Perfect ride. Are you enjoying your trip, Scotty? Way, yes. Way, way, way. way. Nice. I want to show you guys these flowers that we came in to look at. Look at this little bell flower. Oh, God damn, it's a free day. Free day. You guys let me know when you're hungry. I got some delicious sandwiches. Yeah, I'm gonna go uh, look at this snake that Faith's so scared about. See if I go snake wrangling. Yeah, we we landed here. Faith <laughs> went off and then turned around right back on it's after she saw a snake. <laughs> So now everyone's kind of not not excited to go off the boat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look for the snake. Sure. Just don't mess with the pointy end. Yeah. I saw it over there. I should also should probably uh, thought about this and wore pants. You know. I feel like I to me, I'm a, okay. Wilderness. Yes. Barefoot and no yeah. pants, you can feel the ticks get on you. When I wear jeans and I wear socks, ticks end up in my bed. When I wear shorts, I pull them off of me as they're walking up my leg when I'm in the woods. Oh, you feel them? Uh, you feel, you absolutely feel them. Right, cool. But I don't know if that, I don't know about micro ticks or tiny, tiny ones, but the big ones I feel when I have, yeah. But when I wear jeans and stuff, I find them in my house. <laughs> so. I don't trust river around these chickens at all. If I wasn't here, I'm sure he would just go to town on them. I wonder if there's any eggs. Oh yeah, look at that. Is that it? 
It's awesome. So, um, Sam and I are going to grill some, we're going to do some barbecue. I think we got some chicken and some sausages. Um, neither of which we butchered or killed, so <laughs> we're just going to have the barbecue. And I have a very stable platform foundation yeah. built where I can and look. Oh no, you're right. You do have <laughs> yeah. You have gathered enough wood oh, yeah, to here, do other these, stuff. These are potatoes. It's the potatoes. Okay, so so this, these are fucking white onions. Oh, that I just, out. He's mad you're not giving him any greens. These are these are green onions. That they're not gonna make you a whole new onion. This is a garlic. One, two, three. Those are all garlic sprouts that I planted. This is oregano. These. Oh, I didn't even see this. These are pepper sprouts. Um, and these are for jalapenos that I grew last year, and I just collected the seeds. These are all tomatoes. Oh, one, two, three, four. Yeah, these are all tomatoes that um, just sprouted. And, uh, yeah. I'm going to grow Do these. you refill your tanks, your little propane tanks, or do you just get new ones? No, I, I collected all those because I have that little adapter. Oh. Yeah, okay. shit. I just uh, stick them into a freaking five gallon propane and fill them up. Okay. Should, those so are all empty. Them. You refill them with the, yeah, with the oh, big yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, I've heard a lot of people do that. I started realizing I'm spending too much on them. I need to get an adapter and just have a 20. Yeah. I have a 20 for my shower on the back of the boat, you know? Right. So I have the propane tank. Goodness gracious. You could turn that tree to... into a lot of wood, too. Look at her. She's just sitting off She's in the so wood. Ridiculous. Look at her. She's so fuzzy. I love it. Cersei? Would, she, would Cersei come? The Game of Thrones cat, would she mess me up if I walked by her, or would she just walk away? Oh, if you walk toward her, here, look, here, here, actually, let's, let, let's see if I can do this. Like, pick her up? No, oh, that won't happen. <laughs> yes, that won't happen. I love that. That's why he named the cat Cersei. See? He just even, look at that. That's a cat. And, you know, look at how she's stretching, too. She knows you turned around, so she started to stretch like it was nothing. Oh, yeah. God, she's gone. Yeah, yeah, she's in that hole. Oh, that's crazy. She just disappeared. Mm -hmm. No, what a happy her. cat. That's her spot. And then look at this chubby bunny. Now everyone, I cannot believe you eat. You would eat rabbits, but whatever. You gotta she's do it, right? Oh, no, mate. She's backing up. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was so loud. No, no, no. no. She's good. Okay. You're good. Are you good? All right. Uh, hey, guys. How you doing? I'm on unrestricted land right now. Um, I'm on private property. I own it. I am the owner of my property. So this is 100% uh, legal to do in a county that I reside in. And uh, so I'm going to fire my 9mm SIG P250 Compact. This is, this is This is Sands, by the way. We're hanging out at his homestead. That was clear. This is loaded. I'm going to fire at my dirt mound, which is on my property, 100% legal. Um, and if you notice, if he misses, there's dirt behind it, so there's no chance of a bullet going anywhere where he doesn't want it to go. So 100% uh, uh, safe range, but here we go, guys. Uh, 9mm. <laughs> River Park. Here we go. <laughs> River uh, if, if you bark at the fourth shot, you're too late. You needed a bark when he was loading the bullets, dude. <laughs> Just to let you know. <laughs> Look at him. Oh, Alright, we're coming up on my little tiny little plot of land on this hilltop here. Um, starts right around here. Okay, so this is one. This is the property marker on this side here. And... I kind of walked down there, but it just, it goes about a third of an acre here. It's usable land that I can start using. And then that, the valley goes down, all the way down <laughs> to the center. 
down there. And the property on the other side is a 20 acre lot. And their homestead or their cabin is pretty far away, so I won't be able to actually hear them or see them from where I'm at. Um, yeah. So this is it. Now, the way that these old lots work, when they made this road was so long ago that essentially it's moved and it's become a different, a, it, not necessarily a different area right here, but it, it's gotten to be where it's narrower. So in reality, the road kind of starts right here. And it should be a two-lane road that's all the way, that's wide. But because this is a county that doesn't maintain their roads, this county only maintains three roads here. So this is not a maintained road. If you want to use this road and there's a pothole, you got to fill your own pothole. So it's pretty much whoever uses it does whatever they want. What that means is no one came through and rewidened it every time there was a storm or what have you. And this part never got level. So I'm actually gonna put my trailers on this part right here that's level. The other part that's level is down here. Now this is the original start of the property lot. See a little marker right there? So that's where the road, it would be here, I think it's like 10 feet, and then the road would start. So, and then road. Um, in my state here in Tennessee, if you do something to a property and, you're do, and you live on the property for 10 years, no matter what your borders are, as long as they're defined, for 10 years, it's yours. Uh, and eminent domain, I'm not sure if that's what it is, but um, essentially, if I, if I actually put like a fence right there or something and 10 years goes by, and then they come by and say, I want to put the road back. I can argue, I've been here for 10 years. You had to put the road on the other side. Yeah, you have to move it. Um, regardless, this, is, this would be where the flats part would be, I think, for like uh, starting a deck. So my thought would be you would have the RV here, some steps coming down. There would be a deck here. And then I'd like to identify, you know, a couple of good healthy trees like that and run a, a pat, like a, a boardwalk out and a patio out there out on the ravine. And then just leave it like that. So I don't want to walk around here or clean up the ground. I want it to stay like a forest as much as possible until I end up having to use it for some kind of homestead or retirement property. And then I'll figure that all out. So... I can buy electric to come here and I can buy water to come here. This Most of this road and most of this community is uh, off-grid. So my taxes for this small property are $7 a year. 50 cents, 53 cents a month. And they, it will remain that way until I start adding value to the property. And I'm not required to have any kind of inspections or anything like that um, to anything that I do. The only permit I would have to get is if I built some type of home, I would have to get a sewage permit, and that would include the ability to just build an outhouse. Their sewage permit allows for an outhouse, so, yeah. Or whatever kind of toilet I want to use, some kind of sawdust toilet or whatever, um, whatever kind you want to use, you, you can just get that as a permit as well as trying to get a septic tank or something like that. I would never do that here. As you can see, the trees just fall. <laughs> Big trees just falling on the ground. So, property starts from the other side of behind that truck. And you know, we get, we're looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 big trees just in this one corner.
But look at like this one, it's gotta go. Um, that one might have to go. I don't know. I don't know. I'll have someone come look at some stuff. Yeah. I mean, this is gonna be my, my backyard for where I store everything. It's pretty nice. I'm very happy. make this as realistic as possible for you guys in your mind when you look at this. Um, if you didn't want to do any work and you try to buy a little plot of land that's on a hillside like this, um, really the only thing you could use is right here, just this first 10 feet. Uh, 10 feet by what, I think it's 200 feet of usable space where you could just put a trailer here and do nothing. If you drive around all these little roads around, you know, the hills up in this area, that's what most people are doing. They're buying little tiny plots, um, one acre, half an acre, one third of an acre, and they're essentially not doing anything to the land, and they're just parking off the side of it. Um, that's what most of these, like, plots end up being. And then every once in a while you get a couple of people who do like homestead things or try to build just not even a homestead, but a off grid place to live where you're not paying any utilities. Uh, that's what a lot of these people are doing, here. which kind of, you know, it really matches me. And so we have something in common right away without even moving in here. I knew that. So, um, yeah. My thought is by next next fall, I'll bring down my yurt and we'll set up the um, the yurt and the fireplace tent and we'll have everything kind of set up for if a company wants to come and stay here. I'll also put my RV here next year when I come down here. And for now, I'm gonna keep the trailer to my tri hall to my houseboat. I'm gonna keep the trailer here because I was paying to store that. Um, I was paying $90 a month to store that, which is going to feel really good to not pay that anymore. So, yeah, I don't like paying for something. I'm not using it. It's like I'm paying to not use it. That's nuts. I don't like that. I don't like paying for storage. So this is going to be my storage area. How, like, well-traveled my dog is. He learned that in the desert. Isn't that crazy to just go underneath the car? When we lived in the desert, when I first got him, you know, within three months of owning him, I had moved into the Arizona desert and spent three, like three months living out there. And he learned how to just hide. Like when he's hot, he hides, he's smart. It's awesome. He looks for the truck, where's my truck? Let me get underneath it. <laughs> it's perfect. Yeah, so I'm just looking at this land. Right here is a place where I could just actually just back a trailer in right here. Um, and it'll be a little cockeyed. It's not something that I would put an RV on, but I could definitely put the boat trailer just right here. And then the RV could go right here. The stairs I was talking about, a little bit of a, not even a deck right here. This Because it's flat ground, I'll make it a patio. I'll make it so you can use the flat land. And then some stairs going off into a deck up in the air. And something going off to a tree and then just that's it maybe some fencing something to keep river around i'm worried river is going to get into some other some people's chickens so i'm going around and telling people ahead of time if that happens don't shoot him just i will buy you new chickens and if it's an emotional thing i will hug you until you like your new chickens <laughs> some people really like their chickens i can tell so i'm about a quarter of a mile down the road and this is the creek that goes through the back of my property. And it just ends up knocking out the road right here. So the road kind of kicked over pretty far to where someone could get through. And then it just ends right there with a bunch of trees down. Um, this right here is the creek that goes through the back of the property and it is a dry creek unless it's raining and then when it's raining the water runs through it it's exciting so this is your neighbor mike's 
so my, my homestead Mike, that he's working on diligently, as you can see. So he's out of town right now. I hope he don't mind me doing this, but uh, he's got five panels here. They're 200 watts a piece. So that's 1,000 watts coming in. And uh, what he's able to do with that is run a deep freezer, regular conventional deep freezer. Also um, uh, run a, uh, a, a, a mini fridge. I also just noticed a windmill. Oh, that, that. Uh, Small 60 amp, an older one. Let me just chime in one, on that. One, two, three, four, five blade. So my buddy's wind generator has been his uh, lifeline because obviously uh, solar panels don't uh, bring in energy at nighttime. Look at Mike's tiny house. Yeah, um, <laughs> that used to be where my truck is. He moved it? We drug it down the hill with a, a 4x4 Dodge Dakota and a whole bunch of fucking logs and rolled it to the current location it is right now and then my neighbor Mike leveled it but uh yeah we drug it down the look hill look how brave Cricket's getting she's all the way down she's gonna go on the land she looked back that's the first and she's got her head like she's not looking at the boat she figured out where land is she did this once in Milwaukee when River and I went walking on land, we came back and she was like almost at the gate at the marina, which is like literally five, six hundred feet from our boat. You're too far away, Cricket. Look at her, she's so cute. Ooh, birds are attacking her. Do you see that? The birds try to get her. Come here, little girl. She's not. She won't do a full out run. I don't know if you know this, but house cats can almost run at 40 miles an hour when they want to. Yeah. So. That's a house cat. I don't even know what, like, an outdoor cat does. She's too cool to run. She's a tiger. Good job, Cricket. <laughs> They're buzzing you. They're buzzing you, Cricket. So I packed everything up and put it all in the RV, which I don't know if we'll be able to see from here. It's over there. And we are, uh, we're about to head up to the National Forest. And uh, just on the edge of Kentucky and Tennessee is where I'm going to camp. I'm going to boondock up there. I found a spot yesterday when I was shuttling trailers back and forth. Got everything pretty much packed up in here. Everything's emptied out. Refrigerator's turned off, completely emptied out. All the all the cupboards are completely emptied out, emptied out. All the animal food is out of here. They have mice on these docks or rats. I don't know which one it is, but I don't want them coming in my boat. And so there's no food source in here. So I'm gonna grab the cat and say goodbye to this boat for a long, long time. It's been fun, Moonshine. I'll see you in a while. She's getting more and more used to this. So this is her cat carrier when I do trips for that are about two hours or less. And this is right around two hours unless the weather keeps us long. A lot of people ask me if I get sad when I leave one area after I stayed there for a long time. Um, and like if I was sad when I left my house to move onto the sailboat or that kind of thing. I'll tell you, it, for a long time those kind of things really bothered me. Um, I made a choice to just have a switch in my head and I switch it off and if I start thinking about things like I'm gonna miss this or I'm gonna I'm scared I don't know where I'm gonna camp or I'm nervous I don't know how, how, how I'm gonna get through these eight hours in this weather or whatever and I, I just click that switch off I stop thinking about it and I focus either on some music or what I'm the task at hand I just I don't I, I stop thinking about it and then in the, and I live in the moment and right then and there 
I'm usually having fun, so I'm okay doing everything that I'm doing, and I don't get sad or regret. And I find that now I'm very much out of sight, out of mind. If it's in front of me, I'm enjoying it. If it's not, I don't worry about it too much. We are about to jump on the highway, and I'm gonna do a quick walk around. Something I learned when I was driving trucks is that if you're, you know, right before you take off or go on a long trip or whatever, you definitely walk around and make sure everything's set up right. Chains are good, not dragging, brake lines hooked up, lights are good, checking every light. Tires look good, they're full. Lights, doors latched, compartments are latched, chains look good, tires look good. Alright, we're ready to go. Do this. So I try to stay between 55 and 62 miles an hour. Seems to be my little niche of where I get the best gas mileage. Um, my truck has a really good app built into it to tell you the gas mileage every minute. It actually tracks every minute and will give you the average every five minutes as well and then the whole day and the route and what have you. So you can do a pretty good job of you know tracking your fuel intake. Um, the, be the, the best thing about the RV is it's only seven feet wide. So if you look, it, it is as wide as my mirrors on the truck. It's not wider. That actually really helps with off-roading too and boondocking. So it also has the same exact clearance as the truck, which helps with boondocking and with fuel. Finally stopped raining. We're gonna listen to music and drive a few hours. All right, we uh, just got water, filled up the whole RV, 32 gallons and the 10 gallons of jugs I have. And now we're gonna head back into the field. All right, so this is the first of two big hills to go up. So we're gonna try this with a little bit of speed. Just because it's been raining all day. We're good, then fine. The stone's fine. It's not a problem at all. Then we're going to have one big downhill and then one more uphill before we get to the campsite. Oh, oh! Happy. Happy truck. So like always, I came here yesterday when I was moving around the trailer, the boat trailer, I came here and made sure that there, there was no one camping up here. And then this is our last little hill. Tires are all covered in mud, so it's slipping a little bit, but not much. And it doesn't look like anyone's in this little field, so we will take this one. Well, as always, I appreciate you guys watching. It's been a really busy week, uh, jumping around from house boats to off-grid to now boondocking in the camper in the National Forest. Um, so next week I'll go through my boondocking tactics, how I do it, and with the truck in the RV. Um, we'll go over that, and then I'm going to head back to Milwaukee pretty soon. So I'm only going to stay out here for a couple of weeks. See you guys next week. I appreciate you watching. Put a like up, and comment if you have any questions, or if you're just going to say hi. Feel free to comment just to say hi. I appreciate those. Uh, I'm out in the middle of the woods. Nothing wrong with sending a comment to me. i got very little to do, as you can see. And then uh, subscribe. If you're watching and you haven't subscribed, please subscribe.
Please, please, please. Thank you. Talk to you guys next week.